Than Fitch will, but Fitch is going to score. I think I meant 17 seconds left was probably what Coach Juice hoped. <laughs> it was only 17 seconds left, but I'll tell you what. I had a chance, Mike, to go to the principal's uh, meeting this morning. Did you see Mr. Lanovan? Right. I heard Mr. Lanovan, and I, we'll talk about that as the game goes on. Lanovan, that's right. Lanovan, uh, and, and I heard Mr. Luciano from Fitch, and uh, uh, quite interesting. We'll talk about that as time goes on, because I think in the fourth quarter, Mike, we might have a lot to talk about tonight. Yes, we will if it sounds like this. Brothers number 12 and Mealy, number 25 deep for the Vikes. Going to be Nicky Brothers on his own 15. He's going to fake the handoff to Mealy. Brothers going to run to the outside. He's going to get back to the 15, 20, get up to about the 27 yard line. He ran a whole lot to get those 12 yards, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you what, Russell Goddard got boom from the back, it looks like. I don't know if we can, our TV viewers, if Mr. Devon plays that again, but you can try number 88, and somebody smacked him. But he got flat, but no flat. Well, East Line is going to be placed right about the 27-yard line. East Line is going to take over. Now, Fitch scored in their first play. Let's see if East Line can keep par. Yeah. One play is score. That's where it must go. Triple flank is to the left. 25 is merely 16's Jensen and Raymond to the left. Fowles the quarterback in the shotgun. 
throw back to Mealy. Mealy avoids somebody at the 30. Mealy gets creamed. And that was Dante Kemp just spun him around. Looked like he tried to grab the ball out of his hands and take off like he wanted him to handle him the ball. He had a little handoff here, but, but I don't think it's much of a game, Mike. Right? Yeah, got him. No, back to my scrimmage. Right right. The, yeah, right at the line of scrimmage. going to be second down. Big rush right there, George Hall. He was ready to fire off that ball about 18 times before they snapped it. They're in the no huddle. Double receivers to the left. One flanked out to the right, foul on the quarterback in the shotgun. He goes straight back. Bellow's going to put it out. He's going to be caught and was pick up who caught. Looks like Tristan Corp, who's going to be up to about the 31. He's the one who caught the touchdown in double overtime against uh, St. Bernard's. Yep, right there. Tackled by Tyler Walworth and Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown gets better every week. Charlie Brown, right? you see the song goes, Charlie Brown, he's a club. But I can't call this yeah, guy. Yeah. I have to play the record for him before I can say it to him. He'll probably get mad at me or something, Mike. Third down at six. Shotgun again for Fallon. Fallon's using hand signals. And I think he's calling a timeout because there ain't no hand signal for that fish defense. I'll take that right now. And then the song went, he's going to get tough. Yes, you, you wait, wait and see. see. Why is everybody always picking on me? Well, why is Charlie Brown going to make all ECC? Yeah, so why is Charlie Brown? Probably is. As a, a sophomore, Mike, and not many sophomores get a starting nod for Coach Emery right up through these past five or six years of all the wins he's had. Not many sophomores. Dante Ross, the star right now, never started when he was a sophomore. He had run back kicks. He run back, and he, and he did do that pretty well, Mike. But as far as, and I say every week, as far as an open field tackle, I don't know if I've seen any better than him. I mean, you, you remember Jamal Johnson. Of course, I heard he was just as good a defensive player as he was offense. Well, the closest play ever to Jamal Johnson was Matt Maddox on both sides. But Dante Ross is better defensively than Jamal Johnson. I would never put you on the spot and ask you yeah, he who is. you would rather have, Jamal Johnson or Matt Maddox. I told you, uh, I'd rather have uh, well, Matt Ambrose Johnson. Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> Ambrose Fletcher. Here we go. Third down for the Vikings. Third and four. Right, turn up 31. Well, Cobb, Fallon goes straight back. Fallon throwing it out. It's going to be right at the line if they give it to Corb. And Corb sat down for it all six foot four from went down and got the ball. It's going to be close. It's going to be, you may see tubes and hoses going to have to come in here and decide. Oh, that. they gave it to him, right? First down for the Falcons. It looked, it looked like he got it when he got it right at the line. So three plays for the Vikings, and they get their 10 yards. They're going to take over first time with a no huddle, and they're looking at the wrist again, Mike. Oh, boy, the poor guy that's got a black George Hall on that without a huddle. <laughs> say, can we take a huddle one of these times? Fallon drops straight back. He throws it up to Mealy. Mealy drops it. They're going to get hung up one of these times as uh, white shoes, Norris, and Jensen are tied up. But well, one of those passes is going to go backwards. Oh, it's going to be a clean fish kind of pick it up because Norris wants a touchdown this year. Well, Chris Sir took a hit on that last play, Mike, from Hall. The, Hall, the lineman tried to block him and got out of his way because he didn't want to hit him. And Chris Sir says, I'll hit him. And Chris Sir went head down, feet up, on his back and Michael Hall almost got the a joy. Tell me who the kid is, would you, Mike? <laughs> Mike Fallon is the quarterback. He almost got to him. I'll take Chris, sir. Brother Michael was our Pfizer player of the game. Fallon's going to throw it on second down. Tennis for Raymond. And Norris is stalking the ball. That time, George Hall decided to give him a break and defended the pass. Yeah, it must have been a play right there. He's rushed every other play, but he did drop back from his defensive end position. George Hall did. And it's going to bring up Mike up. Third down for East Line. Third and 10. 37 yard line. I'll tell you one of the things. If on the right side, they have Hall at defensive end, Norris at outside linebacker, and Dante Kemp at cornerback. Those are three of the best plays in the area, if not the state. See what he's like, does third 10, he got stay from the shotgun, they're going to pass it 50, 60 times today, whatever it takes. And I don't think they're going to have enough. Straight back goes Fallon. Fallon puts it up. Corp fell down. That's intercepted. That's going to be Tyler Walworth. Tyler Walworth with the high white sock. He's going to get down to about the 16 yard line. I'm going to tell you what. East Lime's going to pass 50 times. Fitch will get a point for every time they pass. That's what the prediction will be. Well, you know, the, the statement of the year, Mike, uh, goes to the young linebacker who we'll see tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, Lucy. Uh, was it Lucy or the other one? Who's the other real good player, Mike? Oh, Andrew Logan. Logan. Logan said it. Andrew Logan, and he's talking about an interception that he had against Waterford, and he said, I was wide open, and it was a beautifully thrown ball. <laughs> From the 17 of the Vikings, Falcons already had 8 to nothing. they got the ball, DeVos the quarterback, George Hall, 42 is the fullback, in motion is Kemp. 
and let Kemp run right out. Get off the hole. Hole's going to pound over people. Hole's at the 10. Hole's got a touchdown. He just walks in there. Two offensive plays, two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. They beat him 67 to 3 or something last year or 6. They beat him 70 something last year, put 70 something the year before that. I mean, East Line, who had high expectations this year of going into the state playoffs, is already down 14 to nothing with 944 to go around. You're going to have to keep track of against all these touchdowns because that's Hall's ninth touchdown. That gives him over 30. He got 33 touchdowns in his career at Fitch. I don't have enough ink in my pens here tonight to keep track of this, Mike. I can't. I, I flunked math. I had Mr. Moon and Fitz back in 1972, and I flunked math. But see, DeVoe, I know this one's worth one. You should have had Craxton. You could have passed. DeVoe kicks it into the field house. I think Craxton teaches general math, Mike. 15. He won a field. 15 to nothing for the Fox. 9.44 to go in the first period. Fox have had two offense plays. 63 yard touchdown, Dante Ross. 17 yard touchdown by George Hall. And we've had six passes in between by his line. Yep. 15 nothing. Well, the one thing for his line was only nine. Well, how much is played, Mike? We got uh, 12 minutes played, so we got two minutes and 16 seconds have been played for his line. And I got to be hoping that his line is hoping that the heaters in that bus are working tonight because they're going to be awful cold, man. And this is going to be not a pretty sight. Good game tonight. Probably Plainfield in Montville. Yep. If Plainfield doesn't decide to forfeit on the way, I don't know. <laughs> but that should be a good game, Mike, with two evenly matched uh, teams. Well, Dana was I ref- feel bad for Pat Smith, who's a, who's a yeah. great coach. He's, He's a good guy. Dana Witz, who is our ref, is a Montville guy. He well, played for Montville. Well, I went to the meeting today, and I heard the Montville principal. We'll talk about what he had to say in a little while. Mr. Ferrington? I, I wrote it down. No, no, no. Mr. Uh, 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 no, excuse me. Mr. Ferrington was there. No, the Plainfield principal. Oh, Mr. Lange event. Yes. It ought to have been beautiful. I don't think it's as good as what Simmons is telling you to have to this game tomorrow. DeVoe kicks off. Brothers picks it up on the 15. Brothers looks still at the 15. He's running sideways, and Herman and all of them just take him down on about the, maybe the 19-yard line. And poor Brothers had nowhere to go. And uh, Herman loves these kickoffs. I don't know why, but he's like a crazy man. He's an animal. Yes. He's, he's a monster. He's a monster out there is what he is. I got to give the auto award. I'm sorry, Mike. I've thought about this uh, auto award, and that's an award we give out for the guy that comes back more than better than him. Mike, kind of like the most improved, but Mike, my pick has been this kid with number 52, Robert Taylor. Oh, gosh, your guy, we never even knew who he was last year. Right, and he's been playing, he's been playing superb defense for 50 all year long. 15 nothing. fouls to the quarterback. He drops straight back. Fowler pitches it backwards. His ball's on the ground. Now it's an incomplete pass. Now that was close to being backwards. One of them's going to go backwards. Intended for Mealy, number 25. Mealy does a lot for his team. He was our uh, foul beast of New London, player of the game, and a double overtime win over uh, St. Bernard's. He made like 100 tackles. He was on every tackle. Mealy was a great player for them. I know White Shoes wanted him to catch that ball, Mike, because White Shoes was going to let him know where he was, but he didn't catch it, so White Shoes backed off a little bit. They're looking at their wristbands. Shotgun again, 15 nothing. Fallon goes straight back. He's being pressured, gets the ball away, intended for for uh, Raymond. Matty Raymond, that's going to be incomplete to 31, so it's going to be third down at 10 on the 19. You know, Mike, that's a nice play right there where they set, set that receiver about 15 yards out right over the middle. The only thing that stopped that from being a nice game for East Line was the ball was a little bit behind him. But, uh, you know, that play is open quite a bit, and they always seem to turn on the sidelines. That middle seems to be there. Let's see what happens. Third and 10. What's happened to East Line? They're using up none of the clock. And he's passing plays. Going to Fallon throws it straight down. It's been complete, almost intercepted. Because the closest guy was Dante Ross. And that was just too high. And all of a sudden, it's fourth down from the 18. And they only use like 20 seconds off the clock. We got food from Capone's. We got water because we might be here a while. Uh, we got three games more to do this weekend. Three games. My what yeah. about the Pee Wee Football Super Bowl we're going to do Sunday? You talked me into it. He says, right here, come on, let's go do that game. I said, Mike, no one wants to hear Pee Wee game. Next thing I know, the whole world wants to hear the Pee Wee game. That's right, and they're calling you. Because what's happening, East Line's playing tonight. Canal's number 31's coming in the punch. I'm going to give him your number because you're the one with all the strings. East Lime and Legend. That should be a good game, huh? Yes, it will. We'll talk to Matt Walker. Hope time. Hopefully, Kennel gets the kick away. Ross lets it hit. It bounces back. What a falcon bounce it takes on about the 38-yard line. But Kennel with a nice kick bounce to the center of the flag. Did that Costello and Landry? Who did the flag? Costello and... Uh, Billy, uh, Costello and Kevin... Um Landry, I'm thinking. No, Lundy. Lundy. Kevin Lundy did a great job on the flag. It's going away. 
And I tell you right now, the grass, I don't know if it's grown right. It's a lot of wear on it yeah. during the week. Not as bright, but last week it was absolutely it's beautiful. beautiful. Probably the nicest thing that we've seen in our high school all, all year long. It was, it was just, it was so breathtaking. I mean, better than college, too. Best thing I've seen. No college team did it. From the 38 yard line. Falcons have the ball. They got the lead at 15. Ross is in motion. DeVoe drops straight back. DeVoe with a quick pitch to Kemp and is incomplete. And finally, the Falcons have stopped on a play. Chris Green, 44 for the Vikes, who was guarding him. So we'll see what happens on second and 10 from the 38 yard line, that being of the Vikings. But we have 10.30 tomorrow. I think we're coming out at 10 o'clock. We have. Legend Stonington. Legend is 6-1. and one. Stonington's 8-0. No. Over at Legend. It's going to be a big crowd. They're telling people to park at the Davis Standard Building off of Route 1. Yes, yeah, so I will. Okay. Then in here. Too early, Mike. I don't want you to pull in. You'll be all right. Hey, I had to park at Sportsman's down the road or something. I would stay there. <laughs> You're out of line. Second down at 10. Russ in motion again. The ball hands off to Kemp. Kemp's to the 35. Going to be knocked out of bounds on about... Uh, to 34, so he's going to pick up four, going to be third down about six. And he's trying to lose Zubek in on the tackle, and Piper chased him down, and Beers, number 56, good linebacker for them. Chris are playing both ways, okay, number 11 was in there pushing him out of bounds. So it's going to be third down about six for the Fox. They lead 15 to nothing, five, because they put it up to the 33 yard line. Third and five for the 33. Thanks. See what the Fox do. Third and five on the east line, 33. Ross in motion, pitch back to Ross. Ross cuts inside, Ross has got the first down. Ross gonna be down to about the 26 yard line. First down for the Vikes. It took him three downs that play. First two plays were 17 yard touchdown by George Hall, preceded by a 63 yard touchdown by Dante Ross. Oh yeah, I got that written down, Mike, so I remember it. Well, I will be able to do that. So anyhow, so we got Coast Guard. Are be able to do it by the, by the, four, the fourth quarter? No. <laughs> Coast Guard, we got Coast Guard and Kings Point, the Little Army Navy game. Yeah. And you got a wonderful interview with Congressman Rob oh, Simmons at halftime. Tell you about that. And we have the Pee Wee game at 2 o'clock. We come out at 1.30 with some of the early game coaches, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. That's what I read in the paper. Uh, tomorrow. Big game in the morning. All right. Said six and one against eight. No. The vote drops straight back, being pressured, gets away from uh, Marshawn. Wide open. It wide open. And that's John Norris. Again, he's gonna, did I tell you you're going to get touched by Well, there's Mike McLaughlin. I'm taking you to the Mohegan Sun. And with that little wheel spins, tell me what number it's going to land on. Because right. you said. Why choose Norris going to give him a touchdown real soon, about five minutes ago? Yeah. I got a lot of tape somewhere. I, I know I heard it. But why choose wide open? Kevin Machart almost got to Will DeVoe. Almost got to him. DeVoe did a nice job of getting by him. And Machart, he, he's no slouch back. He's one of the top players. Yeah. And he's also an all-ECC performer. And in good Hooper. 18 passes because DeVoe has completed 11 touchdowns. It's not a bad record. No. <laughs> But wide open in the middle of the field, in the end zone, towards the back of the end zone, was John White Shoes Norris, perfectly thrown spiral by Will DeVoe, right on the money, Norris hauled it in, and here we go, DeVoe trying to make it 22 to nothing. As good as DeVoe throws it, he kicks it better. Oh, oh, kick, he wow. Wow. That might be to the yeah, good. That's 22 to nothing. DeVoe can kick it where they can throw it. I think you're right. We're going to take a break, send it back to Kenny Fields, 22 for Fitch, 0 for East Line, and we've only played 3 minutes. And 50 seconds, so stick around. We got a lot of game left. You're listening to high school football on 980 the ticket. I want to I want to chase Lounge, man. This is gonna be a long game. We got that pass. Hey, Kenny, keep that clock. Forget about this guy passing, man. Come on, you can go back and see the end of the Marvel game if you want to talk, Kenny. What do you play for? Uh, uh, State. Uh, all right, thank you, Kenny. Thanks, tells me all the stuff. Man. Thank you very much. We're back. Mike McLaughlin, Ron Adams, 22 for Fitch and zero for East Lime. East Lime's going to get the ball because Fitch just scored. Fitch has run six, seven plays tonight. Scored three touchdowns, two extra points by DeVoe, and a two-point conversion by Dante Kapp, a touchdown by Ross, a touchdown by Norris, and a touchdown by George Hall, I can remember it, even though it's still the first quarter. Uh, 
DeVoe's going to kick off. Here comes Brothers again. He's going to chase it down. He's going to let it go out of bounds. That's smart. That's a smart move because Brothers didn't want to get hit again. He's basically a defensive back. He's returning these kicks. He's got some speed. We've seen a lot of guys return kicks. Remember when Roseland in the first game, the athletic director said, Where's his son? He was running him back. Oh, yeah. Jesus, I remember that. Well, how long ago was that? That was uh, one of the first games we did against Montville. How many years ago? <laughs> No, this year you mean? Yeah. Oh, oh, you want me to remember that? Too? Yes, you no, can, because you have a vivid memory. I only remember people who owe me money, and there's not many left. <laughs> I collected everything. I'm, that's why I'm broke. In any event, 22 for Fitch, a zero for East Lyme. And here comes East Lyme, Mike, that no huddle offense. Whitney Coleman, flying down to the left. The young softball caught two touchdowns against Montreal. Hasn't done much since then. Fallon dropped straight back. Fallon's going to run and play. Oh, my. Chris Zurich got a hold of him, and, and who's got him? That's 66 for Herman. The wild man, the beast, isn't it? Herman must have tackled him up right there, man. He says, you ain't going nowhere. George Hall is running around and feeling like a wild man tonight. I'll tell you what. George Hall wants to play some football. Herman tackled with the, the blocker, too. He says, I'm throwing both these down. I don't care. Lewis a two. Poor Chris Sir. He, he gets creamed block, and he gets creamed running. Farrell's going to drop straight back. Farrell's looking. He's under some pressure now. Taylor throws him. He tries to throw it to Corbin. I wonder what they're going to I think they're going to call pass interference against Charlie Brown. Because he threw Corp kind of backwards. Well, Taylor was d dismantling uh, poor Fallon. You know, if I was the quarterback, I would pull my center aside right now and say, listen to me. Stop these lollipop snaps, man. You're getting me killed. Put some spice on the ball. Because as you watch the center hiking it back to the quarterback in the shotgun, Mike, is lobbing it to him. You know what I mean? Like a slow pitch softball. I'm, I'm ready to call one lead on these snaps yeah. because it, it, all it's doing is giving the Fitch defensive line time to get into to the quarterback. And like I said, if George Hall they knocking him down, it's Taylor or Herman. Well, what happened is it, they call pass interference against Corp by Charlie Brown. So 15 yard penalty up to the 47 yard line. Straight back. Fallon goes back looking for Mealy. Mealy caught it. It's kept kind of just played it nonchalant, but Dante Ross was it. Kept kind of like the little pirouette jump. Okay. Or he could just get in there and, and, and play the ball and not the, 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 the end. And he's playing the ball and jumping up and hitting nothing but air as it is completing the pass. But Dante Ross there to stop him. Long gain for East Line. Puts the ball, Mike, on about the 17, 18 yard line. Right. Six shots. So uh, seven minutes the first quarter, and here comes East Lyme, right? Fallon with a nice completion to Mealy. Fallon throws it out to the right. He's going to have Mealy on the right side. Charlie Brown grabs a hold of him. Mealy's going to get two inside. Now he's going to be about to 16 to pick up two. I wonder if we're going to see Charlie Brown as a running back in the next couple of years. I think the next year maybe they'll do that tight end rotation with him, and then maybe the last year they'll let him be a running back because uh, for all it would be, what about an awesome backfield of Charlie Brown, Will View, and Stan? How his ankle is, see how he's going. We'll get a report on that as the game goes on. Second down, he gave him two. Back goes Fallon. Fallon's putting it in the end zone. Tenor for Corp, it's going to be incomplete. Nice defense, Charlie Brown right there, man to man. And uh, Charlie Brown had him covered pretty well. And stops the clock again, Mike. 6.39 to play in the first quarter. Seems like we're in the third already. But uh, I'm going to go over there and break that referee's thumb in a minute. I just pulled that thing down. Mike, he scored. He intercepted the ball against Coast Guard from yep. Florida State. Yep. So I've been in the He's a football player. Wow. Game. I'm out of shape. Give him a grinder and a clock will run. Here you go. Seven from the 15. Fallon throws it out. Intended for Corb again. And there's Tyler Wall with him. It's going to be incomplete. So I said, and Tyler with those neat kind of socks he's got, it looks like an all-time football player with those white socks the way he's got them up there. Yeah, he looks like he's got spats on, Mike, yeah. from the Junior Naval Cadets or something. <laughs> Fourth down, and seven from the 15. Vikings were aided by a great 37-yard pass from Fowler to Mealy. And uh, let's see what they can do. Try to get 6.39 to go, 22 to nothing, Falks. Dante, Dante Kemp's got to be a little bit more disciplined, Mike, on that long pass. I, yep. I think that he just lost a little bit of his discipline, tried to get a little bit lackadaisical out of it, knock it down, and it just didn't work. No. Nope. He's sure he won't do it again. Fallon calling the signal, so he's going to call another. Looks like. Let's we'll see what they call here. The refs come in. He's going to have a conference. Got some good refs tonight. Got my friends, Terry Randolph, Billy Fitzpatrick, Mike Cooley, 
Those guys are pretty good guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Scott Skopiak, Mark, Mark Sevilla, and, and my buddy Kenny right here, because I didn't say his last name anymore. Hey, Danowitz. Danowitz? Yeah. How can you say those names like that? Because like, my mother's Polish. That's why I know Kowalczyk and Rastow. Oh, I see. My mom's Polish. My dad was Irish, but my mom's Polish. That's why she's up I think she thinks she's Indian now is what she's up to casino, but she's Polish. Okay. They give them... They, they pick up the flag. So Fallon's looking. Fallon's throwing it for Mealy. And I'll tell you, that time Dante kept did not show any because Dante kept hit Mealy and broke the play up. Nice job right there. Dante stayed dis disciplined that time. He started to turn the ball over on Dallas to Fitch. 6.29 to play in the first quarter. 22-0, Fitch leading. And I'll tell you, the, the Vikings had come with such high expectations. That they were going to do this and do that. Unfortunately, right now they're two and five. Okay, and the two teams they beat are St. Bernard's in overtime and Rocky Hill. Okay, so it hasn't been as big a season. They lost to Montville, Stonington, NFA, Griswold, and Legend. For the Legend, they played a great game at 12-7. And, and, and we did the NFA game in overtime, yes, right? you did the first overtime with Kenny Jones scored, remember, on the field. Let's see what we got here. This is Kemp. Kemp runs the balls 15, 20, up to about the 26 yard line. He's close to the first down. He just shook a tackler, which you could be. But I'll tell you, remember Ray Nitsky? He didn't play offense for the Packers, but Herman reminds me of him. Because if Ray Nitsky come around the corner leading the sweep, he didn't. He was a middle linebacker. That'd be Herman. Ray Nitsky had no teeth, nothing, bald head, but he was a brute. Well, Herman Lutz has got no teeth, too. I wonder if this guy's got a car. We'll have to check him out. He's a tough kid, though. I don't Oh, his, his counterpart, the other guy, Pat Hanson, he's a former Pfizer Scott Award winner. Yes, sir, and they're great kids. Emily Watson was tonight. She's a track star, cross country one, right? And in New England, right? Up in Vermont. Oh, yeah, New England. Here off to George Hall. George Hall pounding people. George Hall carrying people. George Hall is going to get another first down to the 37. And George Hall almost lost that ball because he was trying to switch hands and bang into people. He runs like he's in a pinball machine. He wants to hit every bumper. And, you know, I talked to Rick McGuire about that switching hands stuff. And, like, a lot of pros you see don't switch hands and that's kind of old school when they tell you to switch hands now because a lot of fumbles have been happening while they're switching hands what they tell you to do is put in your strong hand keep it that strong side and leave it there and don't fumble it hold on to it that's what a lot of people are, be, are being told taught to do nowadays man. Slim, slim jim over the ball on the 37 another first down for the fox they started this drive on the 15 devoe's going to keep it Devo sets up over the middle field, hits Dante, Ross, Dante Ross is to the 40, Dante Ross is to 30, Dante Ross is going to go 63 yards on a catch, 63 yards on a, pat, on a run. Hey Mike, you got to see that block by Tyler Walworth at about the 30 yard line. I don't know who the East Line player is, but that was an unbelievable block because Dante would have got tackled, but Tyler Walworth sets him free, 28 for Fitch. Zero to the East Line. Five ten left to play in the first quarter. And just a couple of numbers. Dante Ross, 14th touchdown. It gives him over 35 touchdowns at pitch. Duvall's 12th touchdown pass. 20 completions, 12 touchdown passes. 20 completions, 12 touchdown and passes. And got a flag in here. Somebody is exciting, a little bit exuberant. Well, we'll get time to talk. So that's 20 for 12. That's 60% of his pass completions are for touchdowns. touchdowns. Yeah. Not bad. I can figure that out. I have a little math for me. They got to back their Falcons up here. A little exuberant there about what they do. But that gives Ross. Ross is closing in on Matt Maddox and Joe Addison, people like that, for touchdowns. He won't catch McCoy, but he's had over 30. George Hall's had over 30. Okay, and Dante Kemp, if you count the time, a legend's got over 30. DeVoe's going to try, what, a 25-yard extra point? DeVoe gets to kick away, and shoot. Right, no, holy holy shoot. Yeah, that would have been a 50-yard point. Are you kidding me? That ball, you're right, Mike. It would have been. Unbelievable. 29 and you know, with 5'10". What impresses me, I'm sorry, Mike, but about the kid was when he was a sophomore, he started kicking, and they barely went over the, the goalposts. You know what I mean? They barely won. Now, he's an all-state wrestler, pitches for a new line, all that. We, Mike tells you all that. But, I mean, that's something he's worked on to make himself better and better at. And now, he's kicking 50 yards. Well, the best game was Platt, because across the street from where Platt played was a house. He hit the car and one extra point. He hit the house on the next one. I mean, I was waiting for the old lady to come out of the pool and start shaking some chase him around the field. And he's a nice kid. One would have apologized. He would have offered to pay for the window, I'm sure. 
But he didn't even borrow the money from his father. Oh yeah, Pete's got a couple of bucks. Oh shoot, if I had his money, I'd bury mine. Where is Pete? He went through the games anymore. Oh, he's here. He's watching outside room now. Down there, he stopped me before the game. We had a little chit chat and feeling pretty good. Pete the ball. You know, he was the uh, manager of the basketball team back in the uh, late '60s when my brother played. Is that right? Oh yeah. Donnie Stretch, he knows them all. Donnie Stretch, just trying to tell you, Will DeVoe kicks off. Brothers is going to pick it up. Brothers, Brothers going to pick it up on a 16. Brothers is going up the sideline. He's going to be down on the ball. And, and they finally stopped Herman. I don't know the way they stopped him, but Herman, he got disheveled a little bit on that play. And that's like taking a, a, the rock of Gibraltar and knocking him down, hitting Herman. But Herman is, he was basically an offensive guard last year. He's made himself a great special teams player, and he's made himself a great football player. And he looks indestructible. Now, I even look, he's looking around up there. Don't even look at him. He's oh. like, Herman, he's yeah, indestructible. He's, what's wrong with him? Yeah. How dare you look, you know what I mean? Yep. I wonder if he goes to school wearing that arm and mustard coat that's about three-quarter lengths on each arm with the shoulder pads on. If he does, it's his style to school because ain't nobody going to say nothing to him about it. From the 33-yard line. Fowler's quarterback in the shotgun. Triple D's right there. Right right right. Here they come. And Fowler goes down because DJ Coleman and Wall were coming after him. He said, I'm going down right here. He loses 13 back to the 19. But I'll bet you that before the end of this game, Hall intercepts one of the hikes. Another one. Goes in there. You know, he's got to put some zip. And, you know, we don't talk about the snapper when Fitz punts because they've only punted once. It's Capone. But, but, boy, he snaps them hard. They're like it's Capone's. They feed hey, man. But I'll tell you, he snaps them nice. Up. Hey, Capone's always mad out there. Okay. Fallon is being attacked. He throws a beautiful ball. And he has Brothers. Brothers catches it. And he's down on about the 40-yard line of the fence. Fallon threw an excellent pass. And there's Herman running down the field. I don't know Ronnie eight, but I'll tell you what, Fallon with a beautiful pass down to Brothers and uh, Fallon can throw it. Where is Matt Walker? He catch that pass? Yeah, I think he's trying to block it, Mike. He's flying with the ball. Oh, yes, what he's doing. Okay. okay. Back goes Fallon. Fallon throws it to Mealy. Mealy gets by a couple of people, but Dante Ross just grabs a hold of him. Yep. He's going to give up two. That starts off good with three blockers, but it doesn't go where they want to do it. They pick up two on that second down and eight. Nice catch by Brothers because it was a little behind him, but Fallon put that ball up there nice. He's only a junior. That was Dante Kemp on the tackle. Mike fought off a nice block to make the tackle. Nice job. Second down and eight. 350 left to play first quarter. 29 for Fitch and zero for East Lyme. I think Matt Walker is going to be playing quarterback for the end of the game. Maybe his son will. His son's a good player. Well, yeah. you find out Sonny how good his player is. Sonny is. Fallon throws the ball. It's going to be knocked down, be incomplete, a tenner for court. The good thing about Sunday is both quarterbacks, Matt Walker's son, I think his name is Matt, we'll find out, but I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. And Ernie Richard of Legend can throw the ball. Yeah. I mean, really throw the ball. And that will make it interesting. Usually when you see a Wee game, they run into the middle, end, but these guys can throw the ball. That ball was tipped by DJ Coleman, Mike. It'll be third and eight for East Lawn. Ball on the fixed 37, 29 to zero. Third down and eight. Fallon looks. Fallon looks to Mealy on the right. Mealy gets by Tyler Walworth. Mealy's going to have the first down. He's going to be cut down. The ball's on the ground, but what a tackle coming in here. Let's see who made that tackle. It looks like Dante Ross made that tackle. I mean, he just cut his legs out from under him, Marty A. Although Mealy did get the first down, so with 3.20 to go in the longest first period in the history of football, with the score Fitch 29 to nothing. What's that say, Mike? Sorico. Yes. He's got peppers on it, I'll tell you that if you got peppers. First down on the 29. Fallon puts it out to Famili. And Kemp intercepts in the end zone. He's going to run it out. Why? I don't know. But Kemp is going to be knocked down at about the six. I don't think he can run it down because once the ball goes in the end zone, that kills the ball. Well, well the referees say no, and they put it through him, Mike. So, Sharico, sausage with peppers. Yeah. Compliments to Capone's on Bank Street, New London. Dante Kemp intercepts the ball at about two yards deep in the end zone. Nice catch by Dante Kemp. Over the shoulder kind of type of thing. And he runs it out, probably not knowing really where he was, Mike because he caught the ball over his shoulder. And, you know, just started running back. Got it back to the seven-yard line. But, you know, my I don't think it matters. I think Fitch could start on the one-inch line. It's going to give him more yards, that's all. Yep. Maybe take some more time off the clock. It's not a bad idea either. 
Right, 3 0 3 to go first period. Fox ahead 29. He got the ball on your own seven. Nice little drive by East Line. Farrell's been throwing the ball good for Kemp intercepted. DeVoe with a high count as always. DeVoe hands off to George Hall. George Hall's going to be brutal up. He's only going to get about two yards on that play, Ronnie. And that's going to be second down and eight there on the 10-yard line. Do you expect me to talk football? I got chicken Philly with blue cheese dressing. Well, you eat the chicken Philly then. Oh, you you like that? You, oh, you're Polish, are you? Yeah, if, if it swims or flies, I ain't eating it. So there's chicken. So if it swims or flies, you don't eat it. That's right. All right. On the 10 yard line, sick it down and eat after two yard run by uh, George Hall. I'll tell you, the Vikes are starting to play a little bit better. Although they're down 29 to nothing. Oh, yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> Heading up to George Hall again. George Hall pounded people. George Hall's up to the 20. George got the first down on the 21. And they're going to let George Hall run a little bit. Well, you know, I think George Hall knows he's only got three or four more football games left in his career. He's had a lot of fun up here at Fitch High School playing as a sophomore. He had a lot of fun playing with his brother for two years. His brother at, at Northeastern, Mike McLaughlin. So I think they kind of know that, hey, you know, we only got a couple games left. We lose one game. I mean, yeah. let's face it, in football, every single game's a playoff. Game. Ask and Coach Bunicor tomorrow. That's right. Ask Coach Bunicor because Coach Bunicor has got two very tough teams left. Oh, we're going to have that game on the radio tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And right? we're having a Westerly game on one of our other sister stations. Yep. Rock World 2 is going to carry the, the uh, uh, Westerly. Westerly story. Westerly's already qualified for the Rhode Island playoffs. Yeah. But, you know, I talked to Coach Bunicor. I said, how good are they, Coach? Do you know? He goes, right. Really, it's kind of hard to tell because of the competition they play. is not as difficult as the competition that Coach Bunicor has played. Player. But I mean, Westerly is a defending, like, in here would be Class M state champions from Rhode Island. And plus, they've already qualified. They're the number one in their league. And they've got a player, oh gosh, I want to say his name is Lamb. Okay, he's a great player. Lynch, made all state last year. Great player. Well, we'll have to see what's happening right now. We've got an injured Falcon on the field, and he looks to be getting up, and uh, hopefully he'll walk off because that's my man. That's your man, Mike. Yeah, Herman. It's uh, Herman Munster coming off the field a little bit slowly, a little lump, but uh, he'll be all right. I hope he sits down and takes the rest of the night off because... Uh, Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. That's who he is. You ever see the Toy Story? Sure. Buzz Lightyear. Oh, I love Toy Story. Great movie. But uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock, and we're going to give away that PT Cruiser tomorrow. How we got to get home? Well, you won't be hitchhiking. I'm in front of the Because i got to leave early. You're going to have problems. i got to the Coast Guard. got to get to the Coast Guard because you got your buddy Rob Simmons coming out at halftime. Let me tell you something, Ronnie. I, you told me about the interview. I'm going to look forward to listening because it'll be the Coca-Cola halftime interview. And, again, when you talk about someone who responds when we ask him, he's there every time. So, on a 21-yard line, first down for the Fox. 158 to go. Is Charlie Brown playing offense? Mike got cool, Back didn't to I? Charlie Brown. Look at Charlie he's Brown. 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 He's Charlie Brown's got Mealy to beat. And Charlie Brown may beat him because he's going to get by Mealy. Mealy, what an effort by Mealy to bring him down on the 31-yard line. But 19 and 20 was a uh, 40-yard run. 48, 38, 40-yard run by Charlie Brown on his first play ever to run the ball the i never seen him run before. Mike Even one second and third no. team, and he doesn't run. And I thought because, you know, being an athlete, because he is an athlete, he wouldn't be starting the cornerback for fifth senior high school if he wasn't as a sophomore. I knew he had the ability to be a running back. So I thought maybe next year they might be, you know, they're plugged into us again, Mike. Yeah. Coach Emery's got the radio on. You think he's got a headset on, ladies and gentlemen? Charlie Brown, 48 yards. 48. This is me and you, Mike. This is down to the 36-yard line. Devote, let's see, could Dante Kemp, he's going to be brought down. What a tackle. What an open field tackle by Mealy. Two Beautiful great tackles tackle. in a row. See, because I didn't know who had the ball. I thought it was Hall. Oh, I thought it was Bross. I thought it was who? Devo I thought it was Devote. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, how about Mealy? Just chased Charlie Brown down, then came up and made a tackle on Kemp. Justin Mealy was our player of the game. Uh, Falvey's of New London player of the game against St. Bernard's in the double overtime victory. I think he said 100 tackles. He may get 100 tonight. Here comes my shot back in the game. Big 82. Those of you are watching, he used to be 67, now he's 82. Second down and five from the 31-yard line. Ross in motion, hit off to George Hall. George Hall is powering people. George Hall is down to the 21-yard line. First down. And Miles Hollywell is going to be real happy here in a second, I'll tell you. Miles Hollywell, we'll take care of him. I don't know why. He stepped us a couple times. Well, he told us my shot. He did? 82. You know what I mean? He's being nice to us. Yeah. Oh, we love him. How could you not like Miles? You know? Thank you. The only ones that don't like the kids that play JV baseball for. Oh, 
really uh, good muscles. <laughs> with a 24, they give it. <laughs> with a 24, they give it. love them. Fitch with 36 seconds go first period, 29, nothing late. Looks like Charlie Brown going on the left side. Charlie Brown breaks it in. Charlie ducks out. But there's a tackle, a big time tackle by number seven. We're going to pick him up for the Vikes. And number seven is Sean Sullivan with a big time tackle on Charlie Brown. But we got a flag. So I think we're going to bring that one back. Hey, some of these Falcons are on EA. Either got bigger pads on or what? Because they look bigger and bigger as the season goes on. And, you know, I, maybe they're continuing to weightlift him because Herman is watching. Pat Hansen, he looks huge out there now, 67, and we know he's intellectually can qualify for any school in the United States. Uh, I think they're still lifting, Mark. I think they lift all year round. And they cut out Oliver, who, even though we didn't throw the block, ran down the field with Dante Rose on the catch. 87, I mean, he's Dave Casper. Mike, he's a weapon at tight end. Yes, he is. He's a secret weapon. Put him out 10 yards behind the line, plop, there we go. And then all you got to do is tackle him. They lost five. DeVoe's being pressured. DeVoe gets the outside. DeVoe keeps it. DeVoe shows some good runners. Speedy's down at the 27. He's going to get back some of the 10 yards that they lost. So it's going to be, let me see, second down and about 13. DeVoe showed good agility then. Sure, tucked it in. Everybody was covered, so he just pulled it in, took off, got a seven-yard game. And that's the end of the first quarter. 29 Fitch, zero for East Line. You're listening to High School Football right here at 980. The ticket. That was, a, that, was, that was the first uh, the regular season. That was the first touchdown that we did at Sporting West when they played Westwood. Get ready to kick off back for Westwood. So you know the one that we're doing? Mike, Mike, talk to the mic. Pull up. I'm sorry. All right, we're back at Fitch Senior High School, 29 for Fitch and zero for East Lime. Fitch has the ball, second down, 13 ball on the 27-yard line. Ron Adams and Mike McLaughlin. And Mike, this will be the first time ever we did four football games in one weekend. Oh, yeah. So we don't have a life, huh? We'll probably do four in a day sometime. I don't know. But I mean, this is, it just happened to fall into place. I know that, you know, East Lime wanted to have the game on, and I knew Legend had a couple of bucks, so I wanted to have the game on, and somebody else you can name if you well, want. You know, the only the, this game solely brought to you by the uh, Master Tuck and Pequot Tribal Nation, Mike. The uh, Tribal Nation uh, paid for it and uh, helped us out with some funds to take care of expenses, so we put it on. And a second the only one. And a second they paid for it too, right? That's the only one. Yep. Bill Sally. We're going to thank them up there. If he doesn't throw the baseball bats and the soft boys, all right. Handoff to, on that double handoff to Ross. Ross is going to be battling. Ross is still battling. Ross is spinning. Ross is down to about the five, six yard line. He's already got a 63 yard catch, a 63 yard run on the first first play game. And Ross on a double inside handoff from Dante Cap to Dante Ross. Gets out to the six yard line. First down Fox and they're knocking on the door again. Is there a dance at the school or something these guys want to go to? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know, but they're going to be late. I don't know if they'll be late, because these guys will probably be out of here early. <laughs> and it's uh, just a bonfire. Okay. Uh, it's one of those days for East Line. First down at the six, in goal. See what DeVoe does. He always calls a high step. Hands off to Dante Ross. Excuse me, Kemp. Kemp's down to about the... Touchdown, as Dante Kemp gets the touchdown. And I'll tell you what, and on that play there, Will DeVoe led the blocking. That makes it 35 to nothing with 11.19 to go. But like the play before, when Dante Ross kept fighting and fighting and fighting, the only person in the end zone was Will DeVoe, yep. who was leading the blocking again that time. Does it all the time. DeVoe's going to kick another extra point. This one he's going to kick regular. His foot's going to be sore at the end of this game. 35 to nothing. He's got 10 days or 11 days to work because they don't play again until uh, when they play uh, Legend on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, he kicked out. Oh, that's almost over the fence. You know what I mean? That's, that's up against the fence for a double. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, everybody knows I don't play baseball. Will DeVoe has never hit a baseball as far as he just kicked that. Now we know he can kick it before he can throw it or hit it. 
So it's still no, I, it's not He's not much of a hitter, Mike. Well, I don't think he can hit that far. That's why he pitches. Well, that's what pitcher. There you go. And they got the DH and uh, or EH, yeah. whatever they call it in high school. So 36 for Fitch and 0 for East Lake. Quarter, just underway from Door Field. And Mike, we got the uh, UConn on tonight. So, uh, girls, yeah. girls basketball. So, we'll see what happens. We'll keep it as long as we can, but we might switch off to the UConn. Well, 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 think, Ronnie, you have the number one team in the state of Connecticut playing football tonight. In back, you have the number one women's team in the nation on the same station. And you're the sports director. Ain't it bad, cool? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's worth a raise. Yeah, but I'm here freezing. Ah, that's Scott great. The Paul's brought me food. That's great. DeVoe's going to kick off again. we got three more rounds this game. DeVoe with a nice high kickoff. Brother's going to take it again. He's going to fake the handoff to Mealy. Brother's going to come up. A couple of nice blocks. Brother's is up to the 25, and he gets knocked out of bounds. And he got nailed by Dante Kemp. Dante Kemp just lowered his shoulder into Brother's. And I think Brother said, oh, Brother. Yeah, he but got Dante Kemp's got to stand there and stare at him. He's got to yeah. move away when he does that. Yeah. We don't like that. That's yeah. not what it's all about. He's you a don't... better player than that. Yep. And, 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 and I don't care what happens on the field. If you got a cheap shot or not, who knows. But There's a flag. That's, that was taunting a little bit, maybe. I don't know. But you know who was the knows. best at destroying someone and just walking away? Who? Cook. Cook. Randy Cook. Got kicked in the face and walked away. Destroyed the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was just unbelievable. I mean, he got these guys on his blind side. Yes. And the penalty is going to be against a clip. It's going to be against these side. They didn't have enough problems. Nope. They're going to go yeah. back inside their 20 yard line, probably to the 14 yard line. Trailing 36 to nothing with almost the whole uh, three quarters to go. Well, the London left at 9:26 because of the lightning. It was 44 to nothing. Can we get any lightning tonight? I don't know. Daniel was his brother like lightning when they play for Marfa. Strode to Mealy. Mealy gets away. He laterals back. Mealy, let's see what happened. Mealy broke a tackle by Norris and almost killed him. So he we got, got first the, down. Well, Mike Ellis out tonight. We got the assistant athletic director, Jenna, uh -huh. in tonight. And we're going to ask Jenna if she can get us some, some uh, lightning. Where's Ellis? I don't know. I'm sure he's got some going on. Who knows? But maybe he, he probably went on that trip with the cross country teams. Well, in New England. Wouldn't know. Well, 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 they're going to win in New England, it looks like. Both of them, Mike. From the 30th, it's the first stop. Shotgun all night. Every place it passes, except one. Fallon throws it out. He's looking for Jensen. It's going to be over the wrong shoulder. And there was Kemp, 30, excuse me, Ross, 32. Fallon, well with 33. Charlie Brown, 28. Garden Jensen. So second down at 10 from the 31 yard line. Dennis <laughs> yeah. went intercepted up on Did he? Oh, he did. Who, He's a good player. Were we mad at him? Oh, yeah, because we were hoping Coast Guard would win. They were paying the bills. He won the yard line. Put us it's good football, Mike. They were good that boy. That was a, they had a period of time when he made the NCAAs a couple of times with Dana was in there. Now it's, he has it out for Mealy, and that's going to be almost intercepted by both Dantes, and Mealy almost ended up with it because they both overjumped the ball. McClellan with the high white socks and the white shoes was back there also. So it's third down and 10 from the 31. So we'll see what happens here. Well, we got a football, Mike. Is there any way we can order some lightning around here on this press box? What, what order of lightning for this field, please? We'll get Bill Toscano out on the field. He'll straighten things Bill, up. could you take care of that? <laughs> Mike McLaughlin could do it. Fallon straight back, being pressured, and he's just eating up. And there was the rush by Low Black, number one, and Taylor, 52, has been chasing him down the whole game. He loses back to the 23, so it's going to be fourth down and 18. And they only took Ronnie 18 with clocks right now. It'll take most of time off. But they only took about 20 seconds on those three plays. Wow. So 36 to nothing. McClellan is deep. He is number eight. Dante Ross is number 32. He's deep. I still think the magnificent thing about Dante Ross is he won the Martin Luther King Scholarship for oh, yeah. 8,000 bucks. Isn't that wonderful, Mike? And you know, you talk about socks. You gotta like the socks out here on my man number McClellan. one. Lamar McClellan. Who played for the London, too. Yeah. He played for the London last year. Canal's gonna punt. Canal gets to punt away. He's gonna get up to about midfield. Gonna take a bounce back. He's gonna bounce around. Gonna be down on the 49-yard line of Fitch. So Fitch with a 36 nothing lead with 9.52 to go in the first half takes over on the 49-yard line. Well, I mean, you know, 
who knows, because Fitch now doesn't play again on Thanksgiving. They may win a game in between. I have no idea what they're doing on this game and who's going to come as CIA. But I'll tell you, if I was playing field, and I'm not playing field, okay, if they could beat Montfield tonight, they should play Fitch because they'd have a chance to get in the playoffs. But you'll tell us more about that when you finish doing what you're doing. He's, he's doing some stats over here, so he's busy. You better leave me alone, Mike. From the 49-yard line of the Falcons, they have the ball and the lead. Hand off to Dante Ross with a couple of touchdowns. Ready. Dante gets around the corner. Dante keeps going. He's down the sideline. Bounces by a guy. Still going. And it's almost picked up by Kevin Michon. Like the WWF. Michon grabbed the hole. But Dante just went down about the 24-yard line. Wow. What a run. What kind of wash machine going? Spin cycle and all. The red cycle and everything. Well, blame Capones because I can't talk into the microphone, okay. all right? Not me. It's but anyway, fine. look what you He stated, week. the principal of Plainfield stated today that his Thanksgiving Day football game is more important to him and his school than the tournament game or any state tournament. And they are getting prepared for Thanksgiving, and that's the case. And that's it. They only care about Thanksgiving. All right. I think the Indians felt about it the same way. I mean, when it first to Thanksgiving. Here after George Hall, we got a penalty. I don't know how you can say How can you deny kids a chance to play in a state tournament game? You know, I just don't understand that. I mean, these kids don't come every year to play. You go high school four years. It's not like you go to Fitch where you're in every year. Or you went to the London when you're in every year. This is their once-in-a-lifetime team. How can you deny, deny the kids a chance? Well, you know, Mike, it's, it's like this. Fitch hasn't lost an ECC game in five years. Now, if you're the team to beat them, you're going to talk about that game for 20 years. You're going to go to a local drinking place with your buddies. You're going to say, hey, Johnny was on that team that beat Fitch. Remember that year? And they're not even getting the opportunity. It's, it's a shame to take the game away from the kids and, and not allow them the right to play that game. And, and, and I'll tell you more after this play. First out of 15, five-yard penalty against the uh, Falcons. Double hand off to Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown spins. Charlie Brown gets to the outside. Going over people inside the 20. Down to about the 18-yard uh, line. Charlie Brown is a big player to begin with. Shows good speed. All right, told him to put him on offense. That's right. heard me. But Campbell listens. He listens to the It must be. Somebody's up there listening. But, Mike, this is the point. He said today in the meeting, and the principal of playing field, said that his kids were very disappointed they didn't have the opportunity to play fetch. Well, I want to ask him if he would talk to me, how disappointed are they they're not getting a chance to play in the state tournament yeah. field? Does that feel worse? Yeah. Is there rivalry with Griswold? He calls his longtime rivalry that hasn't played in 18 years? Well, he could have waited another year. I mean, <laughs> hand off to... No, DeVoe keeps it. He gets creamed by a shot. shot. Is it Snorris having another one? He's got it. No, he sings out of bounds. Out of bounds. Oh, man, out of the end zone. So third and three out of the end zone. But I'll tell you, my shot nailed DeVoe. That's the first time DeVoe got here like that. But the point is this. If they beat Marfield tonight, I feel they'll beat Griswold. Okay, if they could... They couldn't make the playoffs if they beat Fitch. They cannot make the playoffs if they forfeit. So play the game. Okay, let the... I mean, it, it's like... Remember when we went through this fiasco last year with Montville's baseball team a couple of years ago? When one of the players did something and they didn't know it. That was a CIC. That's not a principal. It was school taking his kids out of a football yeah, game. Yeah, but that principal was on the rules commission. knew the rules. Well, stuff happens, Mike. We know yeah. that. You know. Right down at three. But Fox, and they got, I think they're going to be held up too much time there. I mean, I don't know how much we can blame the principal. Yeah. Montville, I mean, they, yeah, it, it was something. That, and I bounced checks before, too. And yeah. that's a good oh, nobody's still, perfect. But, right. But this guy up great. here is making a conscious decision. Yes. When you, when you make an oversight in a rule, it's not something that's it's not conscious. Something to right. He's premeditating to choose to forfeit the game to Fitch. And that is shameless. Where, where is the superintendent of the schools? Superintendent of the schools, I talked with a very nice lady. It's up to the, it's up to the principal. It's up to the, uh, the principal of the school. And, 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 and that's what she's saying. It's his call. She's not going to overrule him. But, Mike, what if you had a child on that playing field football team? What would you be saying? I want him to play. Darn right. Because I want to go to another game. I want to see and, him play. He's talking stupid. It's just nonsense. Because he says Fitz will give him three days they could play. They could play the Thursday day before, as we talked about today in the principal meeting, the Thursday before Thanksgiving, the Friday before Thanksgiving, or the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Now, if they play Thursday before Thanksgiving, they, they would have a full week. Same as anybody else. And he said that this given Griswold, 
an unfair advantage in a long time rivalry they haven't played. So let me tell you something. Great 18 years. Still trying to solve some of the problems they had when they lost to Fitch 73 to 6. They got bounced around and got some people hurt in that game. Okay, so I mean, but I mean, it's not as so good for us. I don't understand what the advantage of days is. It's like you play, you, you take a week to get ready for a football game. What do I know? Third down and nine, I know nothing. So that's why I'm doing this from the 24 year old. <laughs> we don't have a life, Mike. Huh? But we watch these games and care about these kids. Hand up to George Hall's pounded people. George is carrying people. George is down to about the... So he's inside the 10. He's on about the 8-yard line. And we'll get off to principals back. But you went to the principals meeting. The quote you were making of what they said. Now, what did anybody else say? I mean, uh, there was a couple principals that couldn't believe his logic. I mean, New London doesn't even have a principal, so they ain't a setting. Well, he wasn't there. No, they don't have one. Well, uh, Leo Ficini was there for New London. Okay. He was the principal? <laughs> he was at the meeting, and, 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 and Leo, you know, he didn't have anything to say about it. It, it was uh, Principal Mopto talked quite a bit about it. Mr. Farrington. And he kind of acted as a mediator with yeah. the uh, chairman, the, the, the woman from from. Lee, who's the chair of the principals, and um, I tell you what, though, the people of Garan need to be very proud of the way Mr. Luciano talked today in the meeting, because uh, he was very appropriate, and he said, you're taking the game away from the kids, and I still, to this minute, don't know why you're not playing that game. Well, let me tell you and, Mr. Luciano loves this town and this school. Oh, oh yeah. I'm say. Oh, yeah. And, you know, whatever he says is to benefit them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. First down on the eight. Docks ahead, 36 to nothing. 7.29 going first half. Pitch back to Ross. Ross spins. He's inside the five. He's down. He's a touchdown. That's his third touchdown. He got a touchdown. Donnie Ross has run hot tonight. I'll tell you, he's got three touchdowns. He's just powering over people. And I'll tell you what, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he hit you on defense. He's trying to hit you on offense. That gives him 15 touchdowns for the year because he's got three. Makes it 42 to nothing with 7.18 to go. And I'll tell you, you know, we're not pro Fitch because it, it wasn't too long ago in the decade everybody said I hated Fitch. But, you know, I respect to fit kids right to play. Well, I, like, like, we'll talk about it after this kick, Mike. Let's see if he can make another 60 yard from here. Those kids better move back to catch the ball. The ball's yeah. ready. The ball's guy, he kicks it out. And it's, they got to chase it back. They're going back for it. So it's 43 to nothing with 7.18 to go. Um, and, when, and Mike, your, your point was before the kick that the Fitch kids deserve a right to play. Everybody in the play field deserves a right to play. If you have the game on your schedule, guys, you don't know that world circumstances are going to dictate that you don't play. I mean, if you don't believe Groton is right. in some type of strife, try right. to get into sub base, yeah. try to get into the Coast Guard Academy, go down by electric boat. And, 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 and what made me upset and nauseous was they talked about it 40 minutes before they decided to put it on the agenda and Principal Luciano asked for it to be on the agenda before it even happened. They ignored that request. They talked about it 40 minutes then they put it on the agenda finally. They had a vote to put it on the agenda. They put it on the agenda and it was just a bunch of useless garb talk about nothing. But I tell you what, Phillies was not going to play that football game. That was it, and he's not playing. It's a matter of principle because he doesn't like the way Fitch handled the way they called him. Right, but the point of it is, what, what has come good out of this is someone like you and the newspapers are allowed to go to these meetings now. Yeah, that's going to change a lot. It's no longer behind closed doors here. People got to say, and they got to have a rational approach. So let's see what happens. Maybe Fightfield will be proved to be right. I don't know, but DeVoe's going to kick off because it's 43 to nothing. Brothers takes it, drops it. Brothers picks it up, and as Miles says, brothers again. He's up to about the 27. I'll tell you, he's been... Miles has got to stop calling the reverses before they yeah. give it off on the second I mean, reverse. Miles is hungry. If we could give him the food, he wouldn't talk. We'd be all set. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens here. No, but I mean, it's an interesting thing. There's a lot of debate that goes on. You know, there is no point to play if you're not playing the game. There is no reason. But I want to say this. 
If this was Fitch forfeiting, I would be just as angry as I am. Plain field line is not because it's plain field. Oh, they're from north. It's not a north-south issue, as a lot of people are trying to make it be. Now, let me tell you something. If there's one honorable person in the midst of all of this, his name is Pat Smith. That's right. Who would drive the bus down after this game to play, maybe the second half. Fallon throws looking for Raymond. is going to be incomplete. Raymond got it by Norris. Pat Smith would come down to play. He'd play the second half against Fitch right now. Okay, and play. And, 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 and you know something that is really sad is that Plainfield is a very good team. Plainfield might be as good as NFA in this area. They're a very good team. And, and, and you know, I just think they're being denied an opportunity. That's well, what Mitchell like 1,200 yards already. Yes, yeah, he has. It. Doug Beauregard is a good one. You know, we saw him. They're a good team. Fallon's going to throw it out here. Fallon's looking for Mealy Long and Charlie Brown and McClellan are there to knock it down and falling on top of uh, Mealy is Charlie Brown. But I mean, Plainfield is I would venture a guess that if, if Playfield, Legend, NFA played a series of games, they'd all win some of them. They're a good team. But I, I, I just like the way Mr. Luciano, you know, he, he just said, I just don't know why we're not playing this football game. Yeah. I don't understand it. What could possibly be a reason? And, and the, the principals agreed that Plainfield doesn't have to have a reason. And Plainfield's reason was that they don't have enough time to play, prepare for a Thanksgiving Day rival, okay. which is a shame. It's a pitiful shame. Fallon throws it out. Look, and he's got Raymond here. Raymond's up to about the 43-yard line. Matt Raymond, 6'2", 175, junior, catches the ball for Fallon. Fallon's thrown every play but once. Wow, I tell you, Mike, and that was that crossing pattern across the middle that we liked so much because we always say that middle seems to be open. And Fallon threw that one right on the money, 43, Fitch and zero. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the girls game, Mike, a little bit early tonight. Yep. Fallon throws it. He throws it to Whitney Coleman. Whitney Coleman is just wrapped up. And bringing down Whitney Coleman. We'll try to look at number five, DJ Coleman. And Herman. Herman's recovered. I don't know what he took, but he's offset. Oh, Herman Mutz is tough, man. You don't even know what he's doing. We got playing one of these uh, exhibition teams. I think a Greek team or something they're playing. But, I mean, just to hear them play is a magnificent thing. So we'll see what as this goes on. So Coleman loses two yards on the pass. Second down, 12. Fallon throws it. This one's complete to Jensen. Jensen gets up to about the 44, so he's going to pick up four. Going to be third and eight. And Tyler Woolworth with the tackle. Along with Nicholas Madsen, Mike, yeah. number 86, is on the field right now. Miss Lake is somebody on the sir. field right now. Mike. Low black. Uh, yeah, low black. And I got two winners who are going to try to win the PT Cruiser tomorrow. And I got them scribbled down somewhere. Well, one guy's name, I think, is Madsen also from Mystic. Huh? Fallon throws over the middle of tenor for Jensen. I'll tell you, he threw in the middle of George Hall, DJ Coleman, Woolworth, Charlie Brown, and McClellan. Okay, and boy, Jensen met a few of them, so it's going to be fourth down and eight. And I guess they're going to go for it. Why not? Yeah, what he got to lose it for? Why not? It's only 43 to nothing. See what Fallon does. It's just not nice yards. Fitch will get in the total thing, right? Fallon has had a decent night pass. Time out. Call a timeout. So with that timeout, we'll take a timeout. We'll send it back to Kenny Fields. He's at the helm. He's back at the shop. This is Ronnie here with Mike McLaughlin. You're listening to High School Football on 980. To come see why Valley Jeep New Orleans has been voted the year. Here they are, Mike. Come on, buddy. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah. First response, man. We're bailing. All right. No, it's 43 to nothing. We'll go to the UConn girls game. You're going to do that anyway, right? Or throw the progress? Who else has to do this? It's going to be 15 to nothing. You know what I'm saying, bro? Hey, Kenny, bring another one. Okay. That's what TL is. Well, I want to look at your problem with this. Uh, with, uh, Was that about? 
Dallas trying to make the catch. Coleman broke on the scene against Murphy with two touchdown passes. Receptions, he hasn't done much for him, so Fitch going to take over on the 44-yard line. How they lost the yard on the transfer the ball, I don't know. Steve Madsen and Peter Huff are two of the people that are going to have the chance to win the PT Cruises tomorrow. Mike, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pick the third at the field tomorrow of a separate box just registered at that game tomorrow. Is Sam Huff's son, Peter? <laughs> I don't know. How come Dan Oris didn't get in? Because uh, he's not eligible. Okay. There's a lot of rules. You couldn't have played college or pro ball in the last six years. 44-yard line. I want an old guy like you. Falcons, hand off to George Hall. George Hall's got some space. George Hall's going to be down to about the 36-yard line. He's going to get eight second down or two. And George Hall, I'll tell you what, this is the most he's run the ball in a game that I've seen. Well, you don't take this as, as, as a criticism, but the more George Hall runs, the more I know how good of a linebacker he's going to be because he's straight up, but he's so tough. He knocks people off him like, just, just get out of my way. And he runs the football like a linebacker would run the football. Mike, and it's no criticism men at all. But going out of Purdue where he's going to probably be an outside linebacker, I'll tell you what, Mike, you're going to see him starting for the Boilermakers. He's going to play in the Rose Bowl. I used to drink Boilermakers when I was a college. Yeah. But he's going to play B.A. Boilermaker. He off to George Hall again. He's carrying some people. 43 to nothing. Felix, 9.02 to go. Second period. Dante Ross with already three touchdowns. Hall has a touchdown. Kemp has a touchdown. Tyler Ward with a touchdown, Norris with one. Oh, oh well, you got them all. Yeah. And Cut Oliver could be due. Who, who, who did you say was going to get one? Yes. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I thought George Hall was going to intercept a hike and get one, but he hasn't <laughs> done that yet. But it's just no reflection, he's like, because we're not making fun of them. It's just they're overmatched tonight. They came in with high expectations, and they haven't been fulfilled, and it's hard to play against Fitch when your season is not to where you want it to be. I guess that's the best way to phrase it. So from the 34-year-old list, first up. Miles doing a little commentary on the plate now. He wants to go somewhere, too, I think. Hand off to Ross. Ross with three touchdowns. Gets to the 30. Gets to the 25. He's got four touchdowns. He just bounced off people. He got by Sullivan and he got by Mealy. And that's his fourth touchdown. He just went 34. He's got over 100 yards because he had a 63. We'll check with Bill Tavares. See how many yards he's got. 50. Bill, how many pencils did you bring tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you got a shot in the two. Billy, Billy Toscano. <laughs> you know what Billy does the best? What? The what if it's speedball report. I oh. love when he writes about that. Stuff. Yes, he does. He does a yeah. great job. And he's a legend. He's the legend PA guy, unless I'm wrong. Not anymore. Not anymore. fire him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 162. 62. Thank you, Billy. 162. 49 and nothing. 333 left in the first half. Bill Toscano of the New London Day helping us out. It's number Good to have these guys up 50. in the press box with us, Mike. They're usually hanging around the sideline. Number 50. You know it's getting cold when the, when the when people from the papers are in the press box. It's getting to be November. A half a hundred. Yep. A half a hundred. And we'll, let's see. We're playing 12, 18 minutes and 27 seconds. Yep. And we're just warming up here. 21, 27 we played. Because it would be 24, so 21, 27. 12, 20, 27. And 9, 8, 20, 20, 27. We yeah, you're right, 20, 27. I had Mr. Croxton, so I know. You did? Well, he gave me a refresher course when he figured I couldn't add, so he helped me out. <laughs> did you take calculus? I took, I had Mr. Proto. When I was, when I was a freshman at Rutt High School, I was supposed to be one of these whiz geniuses. So I passed out when one and took plain geometry under Mr. Croto. The highest score I got on a test was six. Well, they asked me if I wanted to take calculus. I said, no, I had one on my foot once. I had one. <laughs> Now, the big question is, will Tony Cafaro take his hat off as he talks? Well, I hope not. The lights are blinding me as they are. Yeah. DeVoe kicks off again, 50 to nothing. He's kicking off from the 40, just a few numbers. And Brothers going to take it again. He's going to, no, nope. Well, Brothers keeps it. He likes it. He goes, oh, oh, man. He comes running to number 80. I think that's... Uh, it's a dream like Pat Hanson. Wow. And if it ain't Herman Mustard doing it, it's dancing Hanson, prancing out there. You know who I miss on the, uh, she used to be on a special team, Slim Jim. He's become the center. He's on a Slim Jim and he wore a 61. He's got yeah. good size on him. Remember when he came in when uh, Michael Hall got hurt? Filled in at linebacker, did a nice job last year. Yep. I talked to Calvin McCoy. Calvin's our 
John Jones, on the varsity at uh, New Hampshire. He's going to play a whole lot more next year, but he's played some this year. Good. All right, so let's see. Fallon straight. Shotgun again. Drop straight back. Fallon's going to put it out. This is 28 pass. Looks for Coleman. Coleman on a high jump, and he and McClellan are going to go. McClellan, a basketball player for Fitch. Coleman, a basketball player for Eastland. I'm just wondering. You know, what's going on? I mean, one run, Aaron, it's 50 left and 28 passes, Billy Toscano. So you get 27, I must be 28. 28 passes, Billy? I told you they'd get more points than they had passes. Yeah. I wonder if Billy will let me write the article and if he'll come to the car. We'll take chances. <laughs> Billy has done it before. Billy, <laughs> Billy's pretty good at it. Okay. Straight back is Fallon. Fallon throws to Coleman. Coleman catches that one and bounds. He's going to be close to the first down. I think he's going to have it at about the 32 yard line. He's knocked out of bounds uh, by Tyler Woolworth and McClellan. McClellan gave him a little bit too much space there. A little too much of a cushion, Mike. 256 left to play in the first half. 50 for Fitch and zero for Islam. Look at Big Burdick playing number 69 for Islam. He's got to be about 295. He's a big kid playing good guard. Throw it out to Fallon. He's airing it out again and he throws it in. And Kemp tried to get it. He knocked it away. Well, Charlie Brown knocked it away. What happened was it looked like Kemp was going to get it. Charlie Brown coming across on the other side. Took good, just good hustle. And I'll tell you, last year we wondered if there were chooses of Maddox that left for a defensive back. And there was three defensive backs from last year's team, uh, Mike, that, that have uh, gone out. graduated. And we were wondering if they were going to play some. But jeepers, here hey, you got Dante Kemp, Charlie Brown. McClellan, and who knows is playing the other one? You know, you never know. Matt's has been defending some passes also, so it's second down and 10 from the 36. They're looking for the play to be called in. Fowler takes it. No huddle all night, free slide. No huddle, no points. I wonder if there's a correlation. Fowler throws it back to, uh, oh, man. That was Christian, I think, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh just got nailed by Norris. He caught, Kavanaugh caught a pass, number 35, out in the flat. He gets a bow. He loses a yard, and he got creamed by Norris, so straight down the line. I wonder if there's any, like, West, West Haven people here, or, you know, Notre Dame people that are playing that might have to play Fitz, and maybe went to that NFA and saw NFA take East Lyman to overtime, and they're not seeing this. Let me tell you something. The team that Fitz wants to see is Staples. Here, one more time. First game you ever did. Yep. Mark DeVito ran it back. Fallon throws it, looking for Mealy. Mealy looks at ball knocked away. Mealy and McClellan knocks it away. Number eight and Charlie Brown was back. Charlie Brown plays a good center field. Yes, he does. And it's usually Dante Ross. But I think Dante Ross take a little break this uh, defensive series. So they got Charlie Brown at center field. So I like McClellan Sox, so I like that right up there. So fourth and 11, they got a punt from their own 35-yard line. They being East Line. White shoes and white socks we got, Mike. <laughs> 50 to nothing. Falks with 158 to go in the first half. Deep on McClellan and Charlie Brown. First punt he will run back if he gets it. Charlie Brown deep. Cannell's going to punt. Gets the snap. Cannell 31. Gets the punt away. It's a high punt. It's going to bounce around. Gets a good bounce. Good bounce. It's going to be down on about the 29 yard line. He's like, he's kicking the wall. The referee, I don't know if he saw the lot. That was Johnny Stevens with a little bit of soccer action there, moving along number one. That's right, Johnny. 146 left to play in the first half. And it's 50 to nothing. Fitch High School Mike, we're going to go at halftime. Mike, we're going to go catch up with the UConn woman to see what's going on because 50 to nothing. Not going to be a game here. I think everybody knows it. I think our listeners will like to listen and see what the UConn girls are doing. Because yeah, they made, I think they start at 7 30, and we can bring it back here. Kenny a Fields bit. back at the helm with Kenny. Uh, are the UConn girls, are they, are they starting that game, Kenny? Okay, good. Thank you very much, Kenny. So, at halftime, we'll put them on because 50 to nothing. I think this game has been decided already. 31 yard line on the Falks. Hand off to George Hall. George Hall's going to carry some people up to the 36. Maybe the 37 yard line. He's going to be tackled by Marshawn, and he's also going to be tackled by Lou Zubak, number 42. And 50. Fox going to lose five yards at run. And Piper, 59. Who's played a good five Piper about 250. Must be 31 passes for each line, 32 plays, right? Could be. The only one was, remember when Chris Sir ran it? And he ran a draw. Oh, and, and, and Herman Musk decided that 34 he tackle, passes. He tackled a guy. Oh, two runs, two sacks. 
in the rest pass. Like Herman tackled the, 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 the offensive guard and the, and the running back. Same time. He didn't know who had the ball. Yep. Herman was going to make sure. Second down, of, well, first and 15 from the 27. Excuse me, Fox ahead 50 to nothing. Great in the first half. Hand off inside to Ross. Ross with, what, three touchdowns, four touchdowns. Wow! He's just got another, he's carrying people, and Ross is finally brought down. I'll tell you, that was an amazing run by Donnie Ross. Dante Ross, because he's only maybe 165, and he's brought down by Jonathan Levesque. Some of them cuts across that mic would... Jiminy Cricket. Some of those cuts would make OJ jealous, man, because they're unbelievable the way he bounces back and forth. Unbelievable. 46 seconds, 50 to nothing. Russ is close to 200 yards rushing in first half. Hand off to Dante Kemp. Dante Kemp bounced it outside on a great block by Charlie Brown. Dante Kemp's down the sideline. Dante Kemp has a touchdown. The only guy that can get him is Tyler. And they knocks, they knock him out of bounds. Yes. Yes, Mike. Knocked out of bounds. Tyler Wallace didn't give him any room to cut back inside. Yeah, he could have waited just a split second a little longer. But you know, Mike, in a long game like that, Tyler's smart enough to know. And if I make a mistake down here at Cliff, this is going to go back about 80 yards farther back. So I think Tyler did the right thing. What could have happened was Don Dante Kemp could have slowed down maybe a little bit and gave it, but when someone's running full speed out there in the open like that, you know, you, you don't have time to, but uh, it's all for naught, they're bringing it back. What a run by Kemp, though. Yep, nice run by Kemp, and a free run off, got a hold on Fitch. I think it was against Charlie Brown, that's why he got out of the corner. <laughs> but I mean, man, Tyler Wallace had good speed running with him. Yeah, yeah, he does, Tyler Wallace. Unbelievable. Remember that night his brother got married and he kept calling us from Newport? Yeah. Scores? Yeah. It was a sophomore, I think, then. We said, who's Tyler Warworth? Let me reply. And everybody knows who Tyler Warworth is. And I caught the first touchdown pass. Tyler Warworth. He'll never play. with the story. Tyler Warworth is playing big time right. right now. Plays the tight end, plays the linebacker, plays all what you want to play. He's captain of the team, right? Yes, he is. Because you can't measure what some of these kids have inside them. First and 15. First and 15. Ross with it. Ross gets a block. Ross gets a side. Ross is at the 50. Ross is down the sideline. What a block by 55. Ross cuts it back inside. There's just a foot race, and I move Ross and Zubac. Another block. Wow. I'll tell you what. Who was that? 61. Was Slim Jim. Slim Jim. <laughs> Holy cow. I thought he was a bowling ball. Taking down bowling pins. Holy mackerel. I've not seen a block like that where he got two people at once. Slim Jim. And we're talking about the blocking and not about that run by Dante and Ross. Rashad Harris, 55, let him out. Oh, Rashad Harris, the whole offensive line. What an explosive display by Fitz Senior High School, Dante Ross. Show by Mike, I say it all along. Dante Ross is one of the best football players in high school I've ever seen. He's got four touchdowns tonight at 60. He's got over 200 yards rushing. You might have to make a new all-time list next year. I may have to. That'll keep me in business, keep everybody hating me. Okay, 56 to nothing. There's no time left in the first half. We'll see what the vote does. What an athlete is unbelievable, and that's the words of assistant coach Campbell as he walked by. What an athlete Dante Ross is, oh, Mike, and you know what? As you say all the time, $16,000 Martin Luther King scholarship. What a kid. Yeah, what I and I'll tell you what, Rashid Harris and um, Slim Jim. Yeah. Because Slim Jim had to want to look good. Yeah. He looked like a bowling ball, Mike, taking out the 5-7 split. And the big thing about Fitch is the kids never stop blocking. That's why they win. They never stop blocking. They want to run. We got we had an illegal procedure against Fitch. We have nothing left in the half. They just can try and kick this extra point. And I'm not going to let Dana Woods leave. Where do you think you're going? Dana Woods, you're going to stay here with us. <laughs> you might want to play. I'm talking to the referee. He said he wants to ref down. I said, you might want you to play. <laughs> Suit up. Suit up, Kenny. I think Kenny would like to. He looks yeah. like he's ready to go. He went from a defensive back, Mike, to a lineman, though, in two years. Okay, DeVoe with a gigantic kick. No good. DeVoe misses it. I think he kicked it too high. But anyhow, they couldn't see it. 56 to nothing at the end of the first half. Four touchdowns by Dante Ross. 200 yards rushing. And 63 yards on a pass. 
Well, Mike, I don't know what else you can say except for tomorrow morning. Oh, God. We're going to run down this weekend, and Kenny Field is going to give us some music. We're going to check out out of here. But tomorrow morning, probably, Mike, the most exciting game with the biggest crowd that we're going to have all year long. Besides the Thanksgiving, because you're going to have let you go. Also, you have restrooms down in the area. Okay, look. Ain't no running, eh? Went with only a loss to NFA. When Stonington was losing those 27 games in a row, you know who they beat to break that record? Legend. One morning, and no one could believe it, that Legend lost to Stonington. The other situation, very simply, is Unicor, Coach Unicor Jr. needs a victory. And where did he work last year, Mike? At Stonington, at Legend. Right. <laughs> that adds to it. There's and I will tell it. you what, when it all comes said and done, the new coach at Legend High School and Coach Bill McNeil is our own coach and will be James Bunicor Jr. There's no question in my mind. I don't think so. I think he's found a home. He has found a home and they treat, him, they treat him tremendously strengthened. But he'll be the coach at Legend. I think he's going to be able to be the coach wherever he wants. He is and then in the afternoon, Plymouth State, excuse me, in the afternoon, Kings Point and Coast Guard right. had a marvelous interview we're putting out all over the world, okay, with Congressman Rob Simmons. And Sunday at 1.30, the people...
देखे हैं First and ten for the Eastside Vikings.
Blackman again on the carry. Down and one. 
Second and nine for the Falcons. Capello, the quarterback.
Matt Bernard on our turn. First attempt from the Falcons, ball on there, only 32 yard line.
Completed to Chris Ayer. for the East Line Vikings. Makes the score back at 63, East Line 12. back 
their tip against the Falcons. First and ten, starting on the nine-yard line, coming up on a minute remaining. Gianni Centeno on that carry. Gianni Centeno. and eight. Aspen now the quarterback for the Falcons. 